One sign that you're listening to a homebrew or vintage CW transmitter on the air is that it signal chirps. What is chirp? Well, it's frequency pulling or shift as you key the transmitter. Each individual character has a distinctive chirping note, as you can hear. A little bit of chirp arguably adds character, but if there's a lot of chirp, then it can make signals really hard to receive. That's a particular problem, especially if you're using low power QRP gear, you want your signal to be as clean as possible to give it the best chance of it being heard and receivable by the other station. Why does chirp happen? Well, it could be due to transistors heating up and that can vary the frequency, especially if you're running a free running oscillator. Or there could be variations to the loading on a oscillator circuit that will tend to pull the frequency as well. Rough rule of thumb is the fewer the stages there are in a transmitter, the more it's prone to chirp. Whereas the opposite, the more isolation between an oscillator and antenna, the less chirp there is. Basically, the simpler the transmitter, the fewer stages there are between the oscillator and the antenna, the more prone it is to chirp. Conversely, if there are more stages, then there's better isolation and much less likelihood of chirping. Also, if you're trying to get a lot of power out of one or two transistors in a transmitter, then that is very likely to chirp. Now, frequency drift is slightly different, but many of the things that I'll discuss will help reduce that as well. So, how do we reduce chirp? I'll give you seven tips. First of all, is you can make it less frequency agile. Now, if you've got a free running VFO, that's good because your transmitter is frequency agile, so you can call people on the frequency they're transmitting. That will really multiply the number of contacts. I've spoken about that in other videos. However, if you've just got a free running one transistor VFO and you try and get a lot of power out of it and connect that straight to an antenna, then that's a surefire way of getting lots of chirp. You're doing everything wrong. You've got loading directly on the free running oscillator and your frequency is going to shift quite a lot. And the higher you go in frequency, the harder it is to get a stable chirp free transmitter. So if you've got a free running VFO and they're less common now because of DDS VFOs, but you might still want to build a free running transmitter for say 80 meters, maybe even 40 meters. Anyway, that is very likely to have chirp unless you take some of the steps that um, I will mention later. But failing that, you can reduce chirp if you go from a VFO to a ceramic resonator. You are more limited in the frequency range you can get, but that will likely reduce chirp. Even more stable is if you go to a crystal oscillator. Um, a crystal oscillator can be variable if you want, a bit like a ceramic resonator oscillator. If you put a variable capacitor and inductance in series with it, again, it's a trade-off between frequency agility and chirp. If you want to minimize the chirp with a simple one transistor transmitter, then it probably does need to be crystal controlled. And you might be able to get away with varying its frequency by a few kilohertz by putting a variable capacitor in series with the crystal. But when you try and increase the pulling range, which is good for frequency agility, you are increasing the chance of chirp. So, a bit of a um, relationship with very simple transmitters between frequency agility and chirp. The more frequency agile it is, which is good for other reasons, the more likely you're going to have chirp problems. 
Now, what's our second thing we can do? Well, we can lower the crystal oscillator's power or the ceramic resonator oscillator's power or the VFO's power. If you lower the power, you're lowering the current that's going through the transistor. You're lowering drift most likely because there's less heating and likely also lowering chirp. Now that, of course, is a trade-off because if you're just using that one transistor, having it connected straight to the antenna, then that increases the chance of chirp and the power output is low, which means your signal is weaker, fewer people are going to hear you, but you'll have less chirp on your transmission. So there may be a bit of a trade-off there. A bit related to what I've spoken about before is that you can reduce loading on your oscillator circuit, uh, whether it's crystal oscillator or VFO. If you reduce the loading on it from the subsequent stages or the antenna, then you're going to reduce the chirp, which is good. If you've got, say, a series capacitor between your oscillator and your antenna or subsequent stages, try reducing it. That should reduce the chirp. However, it may also reduce the amount of signal that's been coupled into the antenna or the subsequent stage and that can reduce your signal strengths and output power. I alluded to a subsequent stage. Yep, add a buffer stage onto your frequency oscillator. Um, it could even be in a two transistor transmitter that buffer stage may also be the transmitter power amplifier. Uh, it may be one transistor that will help a bit, maybe two or three transistors could help further and it will allow you to get a decent amount of output power coming out without having your transmitter chirping. So as I said before, more stages in a transmitter less likely it is to chirp and the more likely you'll get reasonable power output without that chirping problem. Now number five, when you've got extra stages, one of the flexibility that gives is that you can run the oscillator continuously, which is actually a good thing if you're teaming your little transmitter up with a direct conversion receiver because you'll need that oscillator to run continuously. You'll just need to shift its frequency a little bit to work for the receiver. But otherwise, running the oscillator continuously reduces the chance of chirp. And also, for that matter, frequency drift. Now, to do that, if you want to send signals uh, in a Morse code transmitter, then you're going to have to key something else. It might be keying a buffer stage, keying the final amplifier stage. Um, but anyway, if you do that, and you're leaving the oscillator running continuously, then that reduces the chance of chirp and improves frequency stability. Another possibility as well is that some of the really simple QRP transmitters directly key the transmitter with a key in the power supply line or maybe in the emitter circuit of a power amplifier or even just the oscillator itself if it's a very simple transmitter. Anyway, you've got a significant amount of current going through your key contacts. That's not very good for them. And if there's resistance there, that can also cause a bit of chirp or drift or other issues. So if you put in a keying transistor, that's a transistor that's turned on when you uh, press the key, Normally you're shorting the key down to earth. There's not very much current going through that the key contacts, which is good. And then you've got the transistor switching the other part of the circuit, uh, might be the power amplifier. And that provides better quality of keying and less chirp um, at the cost of an extra transistor. Uh, seventh, the other thing that you can do to combat chirp is especially if you're using multi-stage transmitters, is thermal and RF shielding. Um, if you have the VFO or crystal oscillator, ideally in a separate box, uh, die-cast aluminium is the best material for that, but you could get away with boxes made of printed circuit board material. 
um, sort of soldered together so you've got good RF shielding. Uh, that can reduce the potent potential for RF feedback, which is also good in helping reducing chirp, drift and other problems. Uh, thermal shielding, that's effective because if you have heat, if a crystal heats up, then that can reduce frequency stability. If you've got a capacitor, an inductor, and a free-running oscillator, then again, heat is your enemy to stability. That's one of the other reasons why it's better to aim for a lower current in the crystal, because lower current going through the crystal in the oscillator stage means less heating up and less chirp if you are keying the oscillator directly. But that also likely means that you'll probably have lower output power coming from the crystal oscillator, which calls for buffer and power amplifier stages. Voltage regulation as well. Keeping the voltage stable, especially for the lower power oscillator stages, really helps with frequency stability and may even help reduce chirp. So here's how it all pulls together. We've got an oscillator that is isolated from the other stages, preferably in its own box. So that provides for thermal and RF isolation that reduces the chance of feedback from the higher power stages here, which can cause problems. The voltage is regulated. The keying is done later on in the transmitter circuit. We've got buffering that provides isolation between the oscillator here and the subsequent stages. Also, you're probably not taking very much power out of the oscillator so that loading on it isn't going to be very much. That also helps with frequency stability and avoiding chirp. The power amplifier stage is here. That's followed by the low pass filter. I didn't have it in previous diagrams, but yet yeah, have the low pass filter and adequate impedance transformation into whatever antenna you're using. And of course the keying stage here means that you aren't having a lot of current going through the key and you're providing a more stable uh, voltage on being keyed for the power amplifier and you can also have components even in its simplest form a capacitor wired across the key maybe 100 nanofarads to reduce key clicking which can be also a problem with very simple transmitter designs so that's basically the ultimate of a very simple but still stable and chirp free QRP transmitter. You can cut things back like you can get quite satisfactory results even with say a, a two transistor transmitter provided it's not very high power. Maybe even a one transistor transmitter that removes all these and just keys the crystal oscillator but the output power is likely to be low. So even if you don't build this more advanced better design at least you've got the knowledge to do so which can help diagnose problems if you find objectionable chirp in a simple QRP transmitter. If you want to get the most from low power amateur radio check out my book Minimum QRP. It gives you ideas on equipment, antennas, operating and strategy so you can get the most from low power amateur radio. Find out more on my website vk3ye.com or search the title on Amazon.